What makes life worth living? The literal meaning of life is whatever you're doing that prevents you from killing yourself, Albert Camus. So basically procrastinating on suicidal tendencies, it literally keeps me going sometimes thinking of all the cool new video games I'll miss out on if I off myself. You're going to die anyways. Might as well stick around and see what happens. Optimistic nihilism. None of this matters. May as well enjoy myself. Alternatively, none of this matters. May as well make my mark in a way that makes me happy. Food. There is still so much I haven't tried. Same. There is still so much I haven't fried. People who seek meaning for life through values. Being a good and honest person. Working and taking care of family and friends. Building a wealth. And trying to live an authentic life. Those in this stage usually seek a job with purpose. Something they can do to improve them and make the world a better place. Dopamine production. Still waiting for that one. Try gambling. Or drugs. The little moments of euphoria when you do something fun. See a gorgeous view or whatever else makes you smile. I just went out with some people from my new job for lunch and the steak I had was certainly life affirming for me. Guitars tuned good and firm feeling women. I don't need my name in the marquee lights. Learning. Discovering. Exploring. Experiencing. Traveling. Loving and creating. Sure, we can add pooping to the list too. I like pooping. Mom would be sad. As a mom, I agree that your mom would be sad. Your mom wants you to be happy and probably wouldn't mind helping you with whatever you're struggling with though. I also agree. For me, skiing. Yesterday I was doing some moguled out runs without poles. It was a fun little challenge. Gotta boost the confidence to throw the spins bigger, as grabs are getting more dialed in. It's fun. I'm not the best. I'm not even good by any means. Regardless, it's a thrill and I do it for myself. Music up, carve it, send it, laugh at myself when I goof because I'm a goofball. Then ski more. Yep, touring the backcountry with a couple good buds with a ridge all to yourself to get in like eight. Muscle powered mini powder runs with some drops is the best. The little things. Sitting on the back deck when it's quiet. Walking in the woods. A liberal sip of whiskey. My kids and wife. A lot of things I'd be sad to leave behind. I learned how to pop wheelies in a wheelchair recently. I'm looking forward to playing at the skate park. What's the worst that could happen? Me getting hurt. I'd say it's different for everybody. For me, it's my wife and dog. Making them feel happy and loved gives my life purpose, even when my depression kicks in. As a fellow depression sufferer, I can attest that helping others, making them happy, can help. That was awesome mate. Congratulations for your dedication to others. Keep striving. Have a nice day. Whenever I go to the cemetery for the burial of a loved one, I look around at thousands of grave monuments for those lying below ground and somehow feel a profound sense of gratitude for the opportunity to be part of life while it lasts. Great food and the thoughts of getting richer so I can afford and eat more food. Gratitude for all the resources you have in your life purpose to direct those resources into something that will make someone's life better. Someone to share this life with you. For me it's sailing. I sleep better on a boat. I enjoy being at sea and everything makes sense out there. Even when everything is going wrong it just feels better than being on land. This is where I am at. At 25 years old I bought a sailboat and sold off everything I had. I found a partner with the same outlook and we left Los Angeles for the South Pacific with about six thousand dollars in a well-fitted sailboat. Mexico, Central America, Hawaii, onto the South Pacific and Indonesia. We lasted three years on that money, got really lucky with the boat. We left the boat in Hawaii with friends and came back to the States to earn some more money to do it again. She was my wife by then and after eight months of being back in the States she came down with pancreatic cancer. They gave her about a year and a half. We got back on the boat and left for Mexico as soon as we were able. We got as far as the tip of Baja before it became really uncomfortable for her to sail. We left the boat in La Paz and flew back up to the States so she could pass with her family. That was in 1987. I still have the boat with me up here on the coast of Oregon. I spend the night on it pretty often and although my health will not let me sail off into the sunset, when I sleep on the boat my dreams are just that. Few 
you've been out there you know what it's like. It's peaceful, it's everything that I would want. Long on an open ocean. I really can't get the rest of this out right now. Fair winds to you. You have truly lived my friend, the highest highs and lowest lows. You're a heck of an example for the rest of us. The fact that nobody knows for sure what happens after death. The fear of the unknown is what makes me want to live. It'd be an awfully big adventure. I don't know. Memes. The little things. So my basic eye. Always a pleasure to see a well-executed self-burn. My two-year-old daughter running to me going, Daddy. When I come to pick her up from daycare, getting a new library ebook email on my phone that a book I requested weeks ago has become available and is now ready for me to read. Every Thursday from 8 midnight, me and two friends play whatever video game we like with no interruptions. Currently replaying the Halo campaigns for the zillion th time. My pug snuggling on my lap. Monthly big date with my wife. Kid stays overnight at grandma's. My cafeteria interior at my work makes really good bacon. That's about it. I'm a simple man. I'll tell you when I know. I don't know if I could actually end it myself, but I've thought for a long time that's how I'll probably die. Honestly, my kid and my wife are really the only reason I do anything at this point. Turns out life is just a big disappointment. Honest question. If you find life a big disappointment, why have children? Why spread the misery of life? He wasn't planned and at the time I still had hope. Don't get me wrong, I love him and think he's perfect, but I hate that this is the world he inherits. It's the little things. We focus on big things, career, family, home, wealth, and tell ourselves there's a happily ever after, some checklist of things that once we've accomplished or acquired, we will thereafter be happy. This is emphatically not the case. In fact, due to hedonic adaptation, all the things that make you happy will necessarily stop making you happy eventually. If material gain is the wheel on which you're running, I've got bad news little hamster. You can never, ever get off. But there's so much joy in day-to-day -day life, if you look for it. My dog, flopping down, next to me with her head next to my hand, looking at me with imploring eyes to please, please, give her a scratch. My daughter giggling uncontrollably when we play a game together. That first sip of coffee as the, as the sun is rising. The warm glow of pleasure in the company of people you like, admire and love. A million little things. A plethora of tiny little sweet spots. Happily ever after comes when you realize that those little things are as good as it gets, and you savor the monsieur. All things pass, whether they're pleasurable or painful, so savor the good and dismiss the bad. Make room in your heart for all those quotidian joys, and you'll find you've got a life full of things worth living for. Focus only on what's missing, and you'll find yourself perpetually dissatisfied. The fact that you can't escape it, dying only means that during the unconsciousness of the atoms in your core, Time will pass at an irrelevant speed, and when the universe dies, you'll just go to another being to live in. If you die, you are literally gambling against existence for what you are going to experience or do. Nothing is truly unconscious, it's just that their consciousnesses just skip all the parts where they have no sense of time or memory, such as in sleeping or death or inanimacy. Also, I could literally be reincarnated into a being that likes whatever I hate right now. So living will postpone it even though I am not in control. Time is arbitrary and subjective, and all of my choices and everything that happens were all predetermined. I might not have the perfect life but my life is far better than a huge portion of the world. I'm not saying that to brag, or make anyone feel bad for being less fortunate, but when you consider where you are and what you could have been born into, you may be insanely lucky. The insane unlikelihood that you even exist at all is mind-boggling. The odds are something like 1 in 400 trillion. With those odds, if you were born in a first world country, in at least a middle class family, you have it better than at least 50% of people alive today. Again, I don't want to seem superior or condescending, but your life could be far worse than you can imagine. Appreciate what you do have, because that could all be gone in seconds. Or you could have just as well never had it in the first place. My life is far from perfect, but I have a place to live, food to eat, clothes to wear, a family, a loving GF, a car, and a job. As of right now, if you have just $4,000 or so, you are richer than half the world.
world. If that's all it takes to be rich, imagine what it's like to be poor. Around 50% of people on this planet are living on less than $10 a day, and a large percentage of those people are living on less than $1 a day. They have no access to fresh water, and no idea where their next meal is coming from this year. I had a realization the other day when I was getting rid of a bunch of clothes I've had sitting in my closet for years. I was going to donate them, and these clothes are likely going to people who have less than nothing, and here I am with dozens of pairs of pants and shirts that I haven't even thought of wearing for the past several years because I had better clothes that whole time. I was wondering if these clothes would fit, if they would even like that style, would they even wear this at all since it's ripped a little bit. Suddenly, most of my problems seemed so trivial since these things aren't even considered for around four billion other people. Fear of death. Not everyone fears death. It's too common to be afraid of cats. Cats are nice. The movie sucked though. To me, what makes life worth living is the fulfillment in accomplishing whatever you set out to do. Doing cool little things for myself to make myself happy and also cool little things for other people to make them happy too. The little things. If you try looking for a few or one big thing you will be sorely disappointed because our lives are small boring, and insignificant. There is no grand adventure, no lives of whimsy, no big epiphany, at least for most of us. So what makes life worth living and enjoying are all the little things that fit in with our tiny, normal lives. Things like good food, a pleasing aesthetic, or being content when you get away from a bad situation. At the moment Silas Iburn is my best answer to that one. Bowsette. My kids. Tostino's Pizza Rolls. The Legend of Zelda. Best thing I discovered in my entire life. All the answers pointing out how putting joy in others' eyes and seeing him genuinely smile back it, you made me realize why mine wasn't worth it. This, I tried for years and was still the disposable one. I'll dispose of myself. I don't have to put up with this idiocy. Life isn't worth it for everyone. If you read this I hope it will be for you. The enjoyment of embracing your partner for multiple house to falling asleep and waking up to see the monsieur. Then food and just general sleeping is also nice. That one sunset that was so pretty that when you tried taking a picture of it just wouldn't work. That huge glass of water at 3 a.m. when you wake up dehydrated as that one cute stranger in public you'll always wonder about the weird relief of finally ugly crying every tear in your body when you've been holding it in for far too long that afternoon you spent cleaning up your living space while dancing to your favorite songs with the volume cranked to the max the feeling of finally changing into comfortable clothes after a long day the adrenaline rush of an epic season finale you You've been waiting forever to watch that one doggo that wags its tail and tries to boop you on the street that one person's ungodly contagious laughing fits you know the one those lazy summer nights where time seems to slow down and the world is okay for a day and you're young again that person's face when they didn't expect your compliment at all and they just light up the little happy dance your heart does when you recognize an old buddy unexpectedly in public those saturday mornings as a kid spent watching cartoons, licking sticky fingers. That one really good post-nut clarity. Whatever works, eh? What makes life worth living is a collection of tiny little things that make one big thing together. You just have to keep looking.